Yeah, thank you, Master. Uh, actually, I always I, I'm afraid of uh, standing in front of a big audience, but right now I'm. <laughs> I think it's okay. We'll turn the lights down, and you can't see it. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> so let me start. So the, uh, today I will talk about robust speech recognition for smart TV. And uh, as Masa said, actually, actually I was uh, involved in the project last year to make uh, smart TV with uh, speech recognition. So I will talk about that. So let me show you some TV commercial first. Hi TV, Smart Web browser, hardware store. <laughs> Hi TV, Sky. Experience the future of Smart TV now. Look at Kelly. With voice and gesture control. Hi TV. The new Samsung Smart TV is designed to create one simple response. Wow. <laughs> so, how do you feel about uh, this commercial? Uh, do you think it is wonderful to speak to TV to turn on, to t turn it on and uh, actually select some menus or with your voice? Uh, actually, that is not the first one. So, in nineteen. There was a toy dog named Rex. Actually, this Rex has the two analog filters. One is low pass filter, the other is a high pass filter. And uh, actually, this toy analyzes your voice, but it is very simple low pass and high pass. So, actually, it analyzes your voice into low pass signal and high pass signal and it calculates the powers. And, uh, calculate the power ratio, then it decides, okay, this is uh, Rex, or the other sounds. So it is very simple. But in 1922, it was very uh, revo revolutionary, something like that. So when you, when you say Rex, actually it decides, okay, the user talk Rex, then the dog came out of his dog house. So it, is, it was a very successful toy at the time. And uh, maybe long time later, Sony made Ivo. Actually, Ivo means the artificial intelligence robot in 1999. This I uh, I have we have a Japanese uh, audience, right? You you know Ivo. <laughs> so is it correct? It means a pair of friends in Japanese, right? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> actually, we think that it is very um, uh, successful toy, and uh, it is very intelligent, and it understands the uh, human voice. So it understands over fifty verbal comments. So we think uh, it is very successful, and uh, uh, it knows the speech recognition. And uh, actually, the, we also focus on this product, Microsoft Xbox Kinect. So two years ago, actually they produced the Kinect. And uh, it is a distant talking, not close talking. Actually, usual cellular phones also have uh, speech recognition, but it is not that difficult because uh, you can talk very closely. So the sound is very loud and clear. But if you speak, Far from the device, and you speak, then the speech quality to the microphone it is not good. So distant talking is a very hard problem. But this Xbox Kinect has the distant talking voice command and control, and uh, it uses a array of four microphones. You see, this they are cameras, but below this one it has a Four microphones, so it can uh, it can do the 
microphone array processing. So I will talk about that later. So this this one talking, this Microsoft Xbox is not the first. Actually, I introduce introduce you the this this project. This talking interface is for control of interactive TV. This this project is from 2006 and to 2009. Actually, European Union funded this project. And uh, there, are, there are many research institutions involved in this project. For example, FBK in Italy, Alangen in Germany. So their research objectives are to develop a digital token interaction between a user and a de device. So for the distant talking, they use the multi-microphone devices. So not only one microphone, they use uh, more than one microphone. So. so just to take a look at what they are doing. Canale for Genere attualità. Opzione. Kurz and answer. Increase the volume by five. I would like to see Al Jazeera. Guida. Ricerca per genere. DICIT is a European project of the sixth framework program. It started in October 2006 and had a duration of three years. Its target was to progress our technologies of multi-microphone signal processing, distant talking speech recognition, and multimodal spoken dialogue management. As main reference scenario, we considered a user-friendly interface that allows users to have access to a virtual smart assistant, enabling voice interaction with the TV. There is no close talking microphone. One can be at some meters from an array, which here consists of uh, 15 microphones, and from the loudspeakers. It is important to say that the system can recognize commands uh, even when we have other interfering talkers. Uh, we have uh, background noise uh, and uh, TV uh, surround audio, which is propagated in the environment. The activities of the consortium, especially during the second half of the project, were devoted to issues as robustness and to give the capability to the system to be natural and flexible. To this purpose, research was conducted on quite different topics. The project was in fact highly multidisciplinary and required a specific effort for the integration of the technologies into a real-time architecture able to react immediately to user query, given either by voice or by remote control. Recognizing a command and executing it requires just one to seconds, even when several concepts are recalled in a single sentence by the user, for instance to have access to the electronic program guide as reported here. The final prototype was replicated in seven sites in Czech Republic, Germany, Italy and United States. The system is able to manage three languages, English, German and Italian. Voglio vedere cosa danno su Rai 1 domani pomeriggio. Kurz and answer. Increase the volume by five. What's on Euronews tomorrow at 11? Ricerca per Giaia. At each site, an evaluation campaign was conducted to assess the performance of the system when used by naive subjects. 170 users contributed to this evaluation, finally showing very good capabilities of this final prototype, even when used in very different noisy and reverberant conditions. <laughs> After the end of the project, the next steps regard the exploitation of these achievements. The output of the project is not only this prototype. During the project we have verified that these technologies can be used in other application fields.
We can think to the control of devices in a smart home environment or to survey the environment itself or to control by voice video games or in other professional contexts we can think for instance to video conferencing to support meetings and many other cases. Okay. <coughs> so actually this uh, European project stimulate uh, Microsoft, Samsung, or Sony, some other companies. So, so we, we are thinking about, okay, how can we uh, make the speech recognition more robust if we do the in the distant talking? So, so do we need this kind of uh, distant talking speech recognition? So we, we say yes, because uh, Remote controller. Uh, remote controllers are becoming more and more complicated. Actually, I put some remote controller here. Actually, you know, all of the buttons, right? Actually, we don't know how to use it. You know, there are so many. So that is one reason. And uh, the second one is okay. It is very bothering to find a remote controller in my house, right? Under the sofa, we don't know. So we, we just want to stick something to the television, not just finding remote controller and use it. And uh, speech, speech itself is a very simple and uh, intuitive uh, interaction method. So maybe in the future, that will be the, the ideal the most ideal solution. But here we have some problems, like uh, we have uh, adverse environments. For example, actually the former DC uh, film also told me that, told us that it has a very many kinds of noise and uh, there are very loud sounds from TV speakers. But actually, you know, we want to put the microphones on TV. And the, the user usually maybe 13 feet away from the television set. In that case, your voice is very weak to the microphone. But the TV speakers, is, is, they are very close to the microphone. So they have very strong signal. So many adverse environments we have. How can we solve this one? So signal processing, it works. So today, today uh, I will talk about this uh, kind of some technical, some engineering issue. So maybe, maybe most of you feel some boring when I, when I explain about this one, but I just introduce you some techniques. So, what signal processing techniques are needed here in distant talking speech recognition? Mainly, we use uh, acoustic echo cancellation, microphone beamforming, blind source separation, and noise suppression. So, I will briefly explain about this one. So, the first one is uh, acoustic echo cancellation. What is that? As I, as I told you, actually the sound from the TV speakers, they are very strong to the microphone. So we need to eliminate the sounds. To do that, we use uh, acoustic echo cancellation. So, suppose that they are the TV speakers and the uh, they are the microphones on TV. So they are very close, and the speakers, the users, are far from the TV set. Then, actually this microphone receives a signal from the speakers, but also they receive the signal from these TV speakers. Then, in that case, we know the signal of the TV speakers. So we take it as a reference signal and uh, 
from the microphone signal. This microphone signal has the mixed signal of uh, TV speakers and the users. Then, if you see this uh, digital filter, adaptive filter, you have the microphone signal, you have a reference signal, then you using the, this, this uh, adaptive filter, you can eliminate it. So, if you know the statistics, it is possible. So, this is a solution, but in the real room, it is not perfect, because uh, as you can see, there is some reflections in the room. There are many reflections. So, if the sound goes from here to here directly, then there is no problem. But there are many reflections here, so in the real case, this illumination is not perfect, but it works fine. So, that is the solution for eliminating the TV speaker signals. TV speaker sounds. By the way, do you oh, yeah. use sensing of the room so that basically if you send some signals through the loudspeakers, sense the room and tune the, Micro the filter yeah, yes. to that, you can eliminate even the reflections? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Even though it has a reflection, so you can eliminate it. But if you com if you think about uh, some some ideal case, ideal case is um, this direct pass. This direct pass you can perfectly eliminate. But if you have some reflections, you can eliminate that, but not that perfect. I will talk to you after class. No, sure, sure. So. That is an uh, example of the output. So that is the TV signal, and uh, this is a microphone signal. So microphone signal has the TV signal plus some user's, user's voice, like this. But after the echo cancellation, you can eliminate this kind of uh, TV echoes here, this part, here, this part. So. This AEC output only has the uh, user voice. The second technique we use is a microphone beamforming. Actually, the DSIC, uh, their prototype has uh, 50 microphones. So that is a lot. This beamforming, if you use uh, more and more microphones, you can have the more and more, a better and better performance. But 50 microphones is very, it is too, too many. But anyway, using the microphone being forming, you can do the, some enhancing uh, user voice. It is kind of some directional filter. So if you speak from this, this direction, you can focus on this direction. And uh, if the noises are coming from other directions, then you can suppress those uh, sounds. So actually, that is the basic equation of the beamformer. So if the we only focus on the root direction zero degree, then those, these microphones are accept the signal from zero degree. But if the noise are from the, this kind of a, direction theta, then with this equation, the signal is uh, kind of some suppressed. So we, are, we call this a beam pattern. So that is the shape of the, this uh, microphone beamforming filter. So it is the direction, and that is the frequency. So according to the frequency, we have a different uh, uh, filter gain response, but anyway, you can you can see kind of a, this kind of a, some some what some ah okay this bright side is uh you have you have the high gain this dark side is a uh, very low gain so when you when you use uh, more and more elements more and more number of microphones you can have the more narrow beam pattern, 
like this, very narrow. It, it is very wide. Also, if you increase the spacing, spacing means the distance between microphones. So if you increase the microphone spacing, then you can also have the more sharp, more sharp wind pattern. So actually, this it has a 50 microphones, so it will have a very sharp wind pattern. Wind, uh, wind Actually, this beam is kind of some FIR filter. If you compare with the uh, FIR low pass filter, actually, it is, it is almost the same. Actually, this FIR filter has the samples, sample by sample processing. This beam is kind of some temporal FIR filter. So, if you look at the response, actually, this FIR filter only passes the low, pass, low frequency signals like this. But also, beamforming will uh, pass the signal uh, from the zero degree. But the other, the signal from the other directions, they are suppressed like this. So, it is the main lobe, they are side lobes. In the FIR filter, also it has the main lobe and the side lobes. So it is kind of some temporal filter. Ah, the third one is a blind source separation. You have you heard about ICA, mm -hmm. independent component analysis? No. Ah, okay. We have some assumption here. So there are two signals. Oh, not, not this case. There are, uh, just to suppose that there are signal A and signal B. And that this signal A and signal B is, they are mixed uh, linearly. So that is the one assumption. So that is uh, some matrix multiplication here. S is the vector of signal. X is the vector of a microphone, uh, the, the vector of a mixed signal. So they are combined with multiplying this, mat this matrix A. So we have uh, independent sources and uh, we have mixtures. In this case, the sources should be independent to each other and uh, the number of sources should be known. Uh, let me Oh, I'm confused. If, is yes. this the example of having two people right next to each other yelling at the thing, or is it? Is that what you mean? Actually, by yeah, it doesn't matter. If you, yeah, maybe as you said, maybe, yeah, person A and person B, they are talk at the same time. Then the microphone have the mixed signal, right? My, okay. my and you don't assume any uh, physical separation in this attempt to separate the two people yelling at the microphone. <laughs> yes. Mm. So two people, three people, it actually it doesn't matter. And uh, the positions of the people, it also doesn't matter. Actually, the microphone has the, some mixed signal. Uh, so some mixed signal? Uh, I need some mixture of uh, my voice okay. and uh, some okay. neighbor's voice. So so it is. Okay. Uh, it so is now I'll be interested to see how you separate. <laughs> yeah, I, I will talk in the next page. So yeah, uh, it is kind of uh, it is really boring because uh, it is kind of some technical things. But yeah, I, I, I do my complexity. best. We love the complex. <laughs> when you're doing a good job of piecing so it apart. Actually, the microphones. Uh, yeah, they actually they accept all the sounds. So maybe. In this case, uh, I just uh, show you the two sources, S1 and S2, and the mixture is uh, S1 and S2. And uh, if you look at the domain, this is the mixture domain. So source 1 and source 2, and uh, they have some kind of some dependency here. Actually, this uh, slope means the dependency. Then this uh, blank source separation makes this mixture as independent as possible. So if you look at the mixture, mixture domain here, actually 
you can see some kind of some square shape or some rectangular shape. That means that uh, this source and this source becomes independent. So if you make this mixture as independent as possible, then the signal S hat 1 and S hat 2 becomes like this. So the formally we have uh, some mixed signal like this, kind of some noisy signal. After the blind source separation, you can separate the signal into this pure sinusoid signal and some other kind of signal. So actually this solution comes from the this kind of demixing process. Actually demixing means the formally actually we model the mixture signal as a multiplic the matrix multiplication like this. Then if you get the inverse of this matrix A, then you can get the estimation of S. So like this. So this estimation of S, in other words, S hat, comes from the inverse of A matrix multiplied by this micro the mixture. So actually, it looks like very simple mathematics, but actually, the, yeah, this blind source separation people are doing this this job. And the last one is a noise suppression. Uh, it is very old technique. Hmm. How long? About more, more than 50 years? It is really old technique. And, uh, but many people use this te technique to remove the noise. So the process is like this. We need a noise estimation. And uh, it is obtained during, during the pause, the speech pause. So we estimate the noise during pause. And uh, actually, we get the error signal, subtracting noise estimation from the filtered signal. So actually, this is a noise filter. And uh, if you get the signal, initially, we, you have the noise filter. After the noise filter, you just subtract from here the estimation of a uh, noise signal. So that is the noise estimation, and that is the received signal. Then you just uh, subtract the magnitude of the signal. Then you get the output here. And uh, in this case, we have, we have some criterion, like a MMSE. So minimizing this error signal with a minimum mean square error. You, you know that MMSE, no? Actually, mm, you, you get the average of the square of this error signal, then uh, actually, in this criterion, you need to minimize this error, error signal. Then, in that case, you can get a filter coefficient here. So, there is very old technique. You call this also the Wiener filter. So, it's, it's a very traditional noise filter. So, if you look at this, yeah. Maybe I can describe it. So there, there are some speeches here. And uh, between speeches, some pause here. So during the pause, you do the noise estimation. And uh, with this estimation, you just subtract this estimation from the noisy speech. Then you can get uh, some noise removed signal. So like this, that is the output. So if you compare with the uh, original one, then the output has the less noise than the original one. Okay. 
Uh, actually, the, I only talked about the four techniques that are used in the distant talking speech recognition front end. So that is the front end. With this front end, you can uh, make the speech recognition more accurate. So this is the smart TV uh, we introduced in January in Las Vegas. There was a C CES, the Consumer Electronics Show 2012. So this model is a smart TV ES8000. Actually, it has a dual core process. So it is very powerful. And uh, in this, in this, uh, in this uh, dual core processor, we actually apply the, uh, the speech recognition front end techniques. Like, like I told you, the microphone beam forming and the, the acoustic echo cancellation, noise suppression, something like that. And then in the case, actually, we, also, we had a very hard time because uh, we only have uh, two microphones here. So at the time, actually, we argued a lot with uh, some producting people because uh, we are engineers. And uh, the designers, actually, we have uh, some designer team. They don't like uh, many microphones. So actually, we asked them we want to use uh, more than four microphones, but no way. They, they only accept the two microphones. So we only have uh, two microphones here. And uh, there, there are very small camera here. So just to look at how to, how to uh, set up this uh, voice control, voice recognition in a uh, Samsung Smart TV. 2012 Samsung Smart TVs have a feature called Smart Interaction, which lets you control your TV with your voice via voice control. To enable or disable voice control, on your Samsung TV remote, press the menu button. Now scroll and select System and open the Voice and Motion Control menu. Select Voice Control. Now select Voice Control once more and be sure On is selected with the check mark next to it. You can choose the language for voice control by selecting Language. Please note, you must pronounce words and phrases clearly and correctly in the language you select. Trigger words let you choose the phrase that activates voice control on your Samsung Smart TV. In English, you can choose either High TV or Smart TV. Now you must run a voice control environment test to be sure the room your TV is in will work properly with voice controls. Now sit or stand no more than 13 feet away in front of the TV to start to begin the voice control environment test. Now while remaining quiet, select Next to conduct the noise test. This measures the ambient noise in the room. Please note the ambient noise in your room should be below 40 decibels for voice control to work properly. Once the noise test is complete, select Next. Now select Start with your remote to begin the mic and speaker test. A melody will play from the TV during this test. This measures the noise in the room against the volume of your TV speakers. Please note, if you have external speakers connected, this test may not run properly. Be sure to use the TV's internal speakers. Once the mic and speaker test is complete, select Next to begin the voice control test. The voice control test measures the volume and clarity of your voice. During this test, you will need to say Hi TV or Smart TV with a loud and clear voice. Select Start to begin. The TV will play the phrase that you chose, Smart TV or Hi TV, and then it will wait for you to repeat it you will have 20 seconds to complete the test. Repeat the phrase Smart TV or Hi TV with a loud and clear voice. When the TV recognizes you, it will show the Voice Control Test Complete screen. Select OK to finish. Voice Control is now enabled and configured on your Samsung Smart TV. To disable Voice Control, go to the Voice Control menu, choose Voice Control, and select All. OK. So. This is the smart TV with the voice recognition this year. So just look at, uh, actually, in this setting, actually, we should uh, select the languages, right? Right now, we have only uh, English and uh, Korean speech recognition right now. But maybe next year, next year, we are preparing for more than 15 languages. So we are doing that right now. and. Uh, 
we have a trigger words. We need a trigger words because of actually this speech recognition is not working always. So when you speak the trigger words, actually it turns on the speech recognizer. So it is also the same as the Xbox. When you do the command, you need to speak Xbox, then you need to do comments, right? Then in this uh, yeah, smart TV, also it has a figure words. So high TV or smart TV, something like that. And uh, this setting also has a voice control environment test. And uh, we need this, uh, actually, to do the pre-processing, the front end of the speech recognition. So, as I told you, we have a very adverse environment, so we need to avoid the, this uh, adverse environment. So, first, yeah, this smart TV guides you to be within the 13 feet from the TV, right? If you're far from the TV set, then your voice to the microphone it is very big, so you need to be close to the TV. And uh, it has a noise test because, uh, as I told you, told you uh, it has the noise suppression. And uh, to do the noise suppression more efficiently, then we need to get the information of a uh, noise ladder. So we do the noise test here. And uh, we have a microphone and speaker test. And uh, it is for the acoustic echo cancellation. We, if we know the speaker ladder, Comparing with the uh, ambient noise, then you can you can uh, eliminate the TV speaker sounds more better. And uh, this voice control test is kind of some training the users to speak loud and clear. So if you speak very low and unclear, then maybe this test will be failed. So. This is for the training the users. And the last year, we test the smart TV uh, with this environment, test environment. So we set up the ambient noise uh, less than 50 decibel. Uh, actually, this, this is 50 decibel is kind of some usual level in the living room. So, but there are many, many kinds of uh, other noises like uh, refrigerators, fan noises, uh, vacuum cleaners. But actually, this ambient noise uh, uh, includes that kind of noise, but it should be less than 50 dB, 50 uh, decibel. And the TV echo, the TV speaker sounds, we tested the TV speaker sounds less than 75 decibel. It is it is very loud sound, but using the eight, uh, acoustic echo cancellation, you can eliminate it. And uh, the user voice level is between 60 and 65 decibel. So after the developing, actually we measure the performances, and uh, we have the Nuance engine here. Nuance is very, the most famous uh, ASR engine, and the, in the quiet and close talk, this Nuance engine has a 97 to 98% accuracy. But if you do the distant talking, like uh, we have the ambient noise and the TV echo, and without pre-processing, the accuracy is below the 30%. But after the pre-processing, after the front-end technique, it has the 90% accuracy. Yes, yeah. Depending on the language, for example, English compared to Korean, is it the same? You have the same result? Actually, this uh, ASR engine has some difference. So if you use a Korean ASR engine or English ASR engine, actually, English ASR engine is much better than Korean yeah, English engine. But this pre-processing, actually, it doesn't depend on the languages. But we also we still have a gap, right? Seven or eight percent accuracy. So we are we have a 
something to do more. Yeah. Close talk. Yes. Is it, talk? Is it like four meters or below or above? In this case, uh, I I I take I, I talk uh, four meters. Okay. Yeah. But usually, when you when you say it is a distant talk, it is uh, more than two meters, more than two meters. So two meters, three meters, four meters. Yeah. We, so close talk is like two meters. Yeah. It is less than thirty centimeters. Wow. Yeah, close to means yeah. A so talk would be presumably with no noise, no mm. interference, without audio signal. Yeah. <coughs> distant talk, you're in a room. Right. Uh, so this would be just two mic. Two microphones. So yeah. what about four mic? Would it house the uh, four We are preparing. Yeah. Maybe next year, if the yeah design team agree with us, then we, yeah we can do the four microphones. Yeah, and we are developing with the four four microphones right now, but we are not sure. Maybe next year. Just when you say design team, are they the people? Is it cost issues or is it? Uh, it also has a cost issue because uh, using four microphones means uh, more cost, right? Yeah. But not only cost, yeah, actually the design. You're talking about styling? Yes, yeah, styling, oh, right. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> actually, the Samsung design team is very strong. And, um, the I understand, but still, you know, they are pretty discreet. We call this frame as a bezel. Hmm? Actually, this microphone is uh, in the bezel. Not not a separate one. So actually, the design team the changes the model many times, but that is the final one, and uh, I think it's good shape. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the final one. Just uh, we are watching this, and uh, I'll finish the talk. <laughs> TV Channel Channel 2 Web Browser Black Eyed Peas Tour That's it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have some questions? Then, oh, yeah. Did Samsung start with one of the open source uh, speech recognition engines from Carnegie Mellon, perhaps? Actually, our research center uses many recognition engines. But uh, you know the HK is. Uh, okay. That is a kind of some open public some software. Actually, we use that, but to make uh, some pro products, actually, we should have the, some stabilized uh, speech engine. So we chose the Nuance. That is the best one. So Nuance. Yeah, Nuance. Okay. <laughs> well, Nuance sells their service. I didn't know. That. Oh, no, no. Yeah, they actually they provide a speech recognition engine. Yes. Aren't they dragon? Or is that a different engine? Actually, we also uh, the merge the dragon system. So yes. you get dragon, you set. I think they're, do they also supply the Apple Star Siri and Siri? Yeah. Apple is Siri and Bess, new ones, but Siri is on top. Uh, so they use the new ones. Yeah. Actually, so yeah. Speech. But actually, Nuance has uh, many versions of uh, speech recognition engines, so no, we, no, no. we cannot say that it's the same one. But Did you try this with the Xbox uh, receiver? Actually, yeah, we yeah we we also tested it. Yeah, the Xbox. Uh, is that reasonably equivalent? Well, what what do you mean reasonably? Equivalent? If you use the Xbox receiver yeah. and feed it into your speech processing uh -huh. and then into your TV to mm -hmm. control the TV, is mm -hmm. it reasonably equivalent? Is it a lot better because the Xbox is much more ugly or what? 
Um, I, I don't think so. Actually, they did fine. And uh, actually, I benchmarked the... The connect. Yeah, the connect. And uh, actually, they made it very safe, safely because, uh, you know, in the speech recognition, we have uh, two issues. One is uh, accuracy, and the other is a uh, first alarm. So if you speak some... Yeah, okay, if you say A, then the recognizer accepts as a B, that is wrong, right? Actually, the Xbox uh, has a very stable performance in that. So, does the Xbox have a speech recognizer inside the Connect unit? Uh, you mean embedded speech recognition? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't think so. So you could use the output of the Connect box mm -hmm. into your speech recognizer and noise recognizer. Elimination, etc. Yeah, actually, Xbox also has its own uh, front end, its own pre processing. So, yeah, maybe we can use that, but yeah, I didn't I'm try right that. Here. Mm. Yeah. I didn't try that. Is this TV, uh, can I go down the fries and pick it up? Or is this a. Concept? On sale. This one? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's on sale, right. In fact, we would encourage everyone to get one. <laughs> 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 I, I don't want to. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> it's up to you now. <laughs> okay. oh, yeah. How much um, information is Actually, it is. Uh, okay, I'm not sure I can say in detail about this topic. Uh, actually, we have two different speech recognition. One is a wake up. The other is just a speech recognition. So, actually, when you turn on the TV, actually there is no power, right? So. Actually, the speech recognition doesn't work. But if you want to wake up the TV, you should hear your voice, right? So there is some other speech recognition unit in it. It is very low power, but it always hears your voice. So it detects your voice as a high TV or some, something else. Then it only detects the high TV. But it doesn't depend on the speakers. It, it is a speaker independent recognition. So if you say Hi TV or if he say Hi TV, then it recognizes, then it turns on the TV. Then different, spe different speech recognition works after that. Yeah. Have you done human testing on this yet? Sorry? Have you tested it with an actual living room yet? Yes. My question would be, you got a physical remote control, uh -huh. and the guy doing conniption fits yelling at it. <laughs> After a week, what percent do people yell at these things? Mm. Or what percent of the time do people really go back to the remote, normal remote control for most of the use? And I have a reason mm. for assuming that they're going to go to back to the remote. Right. I, I, I understand what you're saying. Right. Let's say they go back to the remote because you're not going to know. Mm. My suspicion is that if you had a button on the remote saying, Hi TV, mm. and immediately turned off all these loudspeakers at mm. that point, mm. you could increase your speech recognition decreased your error rate significantly with if you were running in a quiet, a, a muted mode. Mm. And then got, the guy would use the TV uh, remote anytime he wants to enter the voice yes. command. Good, yeah. Yeah. But if he doesn't have a remote, then obviously that's not... Actually, uh, this year we have uh, two solutions. So one is the microphone on TV, 
The other is the microphone in remote control. We actually, we support both things. But obviously, we want to use a microphone on TV because uh, we want, uh, as I said, actually, we, want, we don't want to find the remote control. So, uh, so. But yeah, I, I totally don't agree. I think people are going to work that way, but that's why I'm interested in how they work, mm. not what you as the supplier theorize mm. would be nice. Okay. Yeah. How about personalizing some of these systems? Do you see that in the future? Oh, yes, we are doing that. Actually, the, as you said, actually, this, this maybe the, this is your TV. Then you, only you wants to turn on this TV, right? Then, yeah, we need a personalization. So, actually, yeah, we are doing that, yes. And face recognition and? Face recognition also. Actually, this model also has the face recognition. So, so what's the size of the command vocabulary? And do you do context switching? Uh, no. You cannot do that easily, but right now we have um, 50 comments. Yeah, yeah. and uh, actually it also supports that some web searching, but in that case it is not an embedded speech recognition, it is a server-based speech recognition. So it is, we are preparing for that, but not now. But you are saying you can change the comments, right? Well, what's very common in the industry is uh, speech recognition so difficult. Mm. That all the companies I know of do context switching on the vocabulary. Right. Depending on where you are. That's right. Uh, That's right. So, for instance, if, if in your example, if someone asks for the browser, well, mm. if, if you just give it some name, the browser's, I mean, it's not going to know how to. Actually, that is not embedded in speech recognition. Are right. you talking about the person would be uh, changing context or the TV would change? No, I'm talking about switching the commands menu. Command menu. Uh, the recognized. Right. Based, on, based on where you are in the menu selection. Because of limited memory. Oh, uh, uh, right. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I got it. Actually, this recognition is doing like you said. So. In this menu, we have a limited vocabulary. So within this vocabulary, you find the solid the, the answers. So yeah, yeah, we are, yeah, it works like that. Yes. And so now, since you just mentioned server processing, you're mm. not doing any remote processing. It's all local in the TV. You mean what? All the speech processing is in the television. It's not going to the network. Ah, uh, actually the pre-processing is in the television. Yeah, the pre-processing is in the... But it is doing network processing. But uh, when you do the speech recognition, actually when you do the some yeah, voice command and control, it is a limited uh, vocabulary. Then in that case, we use the embedded speech recognition. But if you do the web searching, then we don't know what you will say, so in that case, we use the server-based speech recognition. So we have a different. Tool. So that's using nuance as a service, like Siri does. Yeah, right. In that case, right. Yes. Damn, this is really exciting. Instead of my poor English, so sorry. Have you figured out some very complex things? Uh,